Well, what, what happens uh, is inorganic chemistry by virtue must know how that stuff works because gunpowder was invented by Chinese over 2,000 years ago and it's entirely inorganic matter. It's a mixture of uh, finely ground sulfur, carbon, which was abandoned as a charcoal, and a very specific water-soluble compound, which now used in fertilizers, and that is a sodium nitrate. So when you mix them in appropriate uh, ratio and slowly heat it up until it starts melting, so to speak, that requires very careful, very gentle mixing of that molten system, homogenizing it with a wooden stick. No metal was allowed at that time. And then it solidifies. And when it's solid, people were crushing it into small, <clears throat> almost like a powder is. And it was appearing to be a color like black. That's why it was called gunpowder. It was, uh, people were able to load it through the muzzle and make something uh, shooting out of it. But Chinese certainly didn't do it yet, because the main purpose of that was to use it as a fireworks. So fireworks contain actually uh, two very important classes of compounds together. Uh, and that is one of the typical examples you can go ahead and buy now anywhere in a store around town. That little part uh, contains propellant, which is also gunpowder, and that is explosive part, which has also some uh, colored materials embedded which can create beautiful colors like a pink, red, green or just white. <clears throat> so what happens in fireworks that a fuse gets ignited and people run away and that item should be positioned into a tube which will actually act as a launching pad and it propels up because of burning of that propellant here. Composition of those two slightly different but this one is burning slower because gunpowder is mixed with some neutral ingredient. Typically it would be inorganic matter, such as fine sand or clay. So it will not be very rapidly burning, creating explosion. So propellant moves this stuff up and then when it gets to uh, the ignition of uh, explosive part, then you see this rapid explosion, which is a chemical reaction. During that explosion, there is a generation of large volumes of uh, gases, such as steam, water vapor, nitrogen. <clears throat> could be nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide. And uh, that very rapid expansion and heat creates ignition of particles which are inside. For example, if you have a very bright white, uh, like uh, stars coming down, like a shower, that is a typically magnesium turnings and the pieces of foil burning and that takes a few seconds. <clears throat> if you see a very nice pleasant green color that is typically either barium nitrate is used or copper, a little bit of that in, in a mixture which, which is in this explosive part of firework. If it's a very nice pleasant uh, lilac it could be potassium mixed with a little bit of lithium or strontium, uh, also nitrates, very rarely chlorides. So it must be all kept very dry because these inorganic substances are sensitive to moisture and if people kept them in the garages or some kind of sheds with dump conditions then it uh, wouldn't be a big surprise if it wouldn't ignite to do anything. So that is a source of danger, potential fire and injuries. So it should be kept dry, then it works properly. Again, one more time, uh, the propellants uh, create thrust, the stuff flies, or just moves and the explosion part explodes. That's how firework works. Most of interesting fireworks, because I'm not talking about different firecrackers and all spinning things, because it's just basically propellants. That's how it works. Okay. In a chemical sense, we must have <clears throat> a compound which is unstable. So that fuse, which provides ignition, creates enough temperature for chemical reaction to occur. And as a result of that chemical reaction, we definitely will see generation of gases. So now we can make a division, which is kind of shaky between propellants and explosives. Propellants typically materials which burn much, much slower by a factor of four, 10 times, 100 times slower than explosives to go off. And that creates a big thrust that creates a generation of large volume of light gases, hot gases which pull 
uh, item in opposite direction from this gas is because of reactive force.